Hello again, fans and builders, and welcome back to GM Construct. This is episode 15 of Watermod Essentials, and in this episode we'll be constructing a device that sends out a laser beacon, giving away the position of an entity we're looking for. An entity is nothing more than a prop which has Lua code embedded into it. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating something that will locate an entity on the map if we can't see it. The way we're going to do this is by constructing a line with two points. The first point will be at our entity. The second point will be up in the sky. We're going to draw a straight line up and down, high enough that it will be visible anywhere on the map. In any project where you're trying to find something, you're going to need a target finder. Set your minimum distance to 1 and your maximum distance to 9, 999, 999. This will span it across the entire map to make it easy to find something. But in our case, we're looking for something spe very specific. So we're going to have to narrow our search field down to one item. In our case, we're looking for the Magnuson device. And the two things you need are the model name and the entity name. First, let's find the model. So type Magnus, the first few characters of the Magnuson device, in the search bar. Then after you found it, right-click it, and click Copy to Clipboard. This will copy the last part of the model's path to the clipboard. Then just paste it in the model filter box. Next, all we need to do is provide an entity name. In our case, the entity name is Weapon underscore Strider Buster. Just type that in the Entity Filter field, and we're good to go. Using only wire gates and wire components, the best way to construct the line in space is through a hollow emitter. A hollow emitter is a device that allows you to create holographic images using dots and lines. However, for a line to be drawn, the dot must always be in motion. We'll solve this problem later using a square pulse, but for now let's go ahead and just spawn the hollow emitter itself. Set your fade rate to 24. This way, that the, this way the dots and beams don't fade out before the line is drawn. It makes the entity a lot easier to find. Next thing we're going to need is a constant value. This is going to house all the values that we're going to use during the project that won't change. First is going to be a 3D vector, so set the drop down box to 3D vector and type in 255, 0, 0. The others, all normal numbers, will be used later in the tutorial. And while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and spawn all the gates we're going to need. Starting with a gate entity position, whose purpose is to display the X, Y, and Z coordinate of an entity that is being fed into the gate's entity input. Next thing we're going to be using is called a gate vector decompose. To decompose a vector is simply to split it into three normal numbers. In Gary's mod, a vector can't be used in an input which takes a number, so we need to split it up. Then go ahead and get a compose gate. We'll be splitting apart the vector, modifying one of its values, and composing it back together into a new vector. And finally, we're going to need a gate time square pulse. As we learned in previous tutorials, the square pulse alternates between two values for a set period of time per each value. Before we get to the wiring, here's a list of all the components we just spawned. Pause the video if you need more time to look it over. And without further ado, we have our entity spawned, our wire gates in place, so let's get wiring. Wire ent from the entity position gate to the one underscore entity output of the target finder. This will send the XYZ coordinate of our Magnuson device to the position gate, and output is a vector. To make the values inside of our vector more accessible, we need to split it apart. So wire A from the decompose to the entity position gate, which will split apart the position into three accessible values. Now our goal is to create a line straight up in the air so high that it can be seen anywhere on the map. To construct the line, you need two points. The first point will be our entity, and the second point will be 5,000 units above the map. As mentioned before, the hollow emitter only draws a line when its target is moving. In short, we need to keep the draw positions for the hollow emitter moving. To do this, let's set up our square pulse, wiring pulse time to the constant value of 0 0.5, and wiring gap time to the same constant value of 0 0.5. We now have the times for our values assigned. We just need to assign the values themselves. So let's wire min, the minimum value, to the Z position of the decompose. 
This will make it so that the first point of our line always presides at the end of the Z position. Now, for the max input, we're going to wire the constant value of 5000. This in turn will ensure that the second point of the line always rests at the Z axis position of 5000. Now, as we have finished taking the vector apart and manipulating it, we need to put it back together. So wire x from the composed to the decomposed output of x, and wire y to the, from the composed to the decomposed value of y. These two values will not be altered. However, we are going to wire z from the composed to the square pulse. Now let's take a moment and see what's going on. Here we have our position vector, the coordinate at which our entity rests. To manipulate any single value inside of a vector, you first must put it into its components, like so. Now, our intention is to construct a straight vertical line. A line requires two points in space. This is where our square pulse comes in. We're going to have alternating between some value and 5000. For the second point of our line, we plug in the z value of the disassembled position vector. Now the square pulse alternates between 85, the first z position, and the value of 5000, the second z position. We don't need to manipulate the x and y values, because we're only constructing a straight line vertically into the air. So now all we need to do is compose it all back into a vector with a new alternating value. And voila, we have our positions. Well, the last thing we need to do is set up our hollow emitter. It has a various array of inputs which define its parameters. The thing we're going to do is wire pause from the hollow emitter to the vector composition gate. This will send our newly constructed vector to the target position where the holographic dot will be drawn. Next, let's wire color from the hollow emitter to our first constant value, the vector. 25500 outputs red. Next, let's wire line beam to the constant value of 1. This will instruct our hollow emitter to draw lines between the dots. Without this, we won't see our enemy. Finally, we're wiring size to the constant value of 32. This will determine the width of the beam that's being drawn. The thicker, the better. Now, it's not done yet, because obviously, without a method of control, this won't work. So let's go ahead and place a button. Make it toggled and make the value of basic 1 and 0. As per usual, 1 will represent the on setting and 0 will represent the off setting. Okay there, now that we have that spawn, we have all the components that we're going to need for this contraption to work. Let's pull out our wiring tool and finish it up. Wire active from the hollow emitter to the button. When the button is on, it'll draw the line. Next, wire run from the square pulse to the button. This is pretty obvious. While the button's on, the square pulse will alternate between the two values. While it's off, it will not. Now, where the device is right now would be pretty easy to find. So let's hide it somewhere. All right, the device is well hidden. So let's put our contraption to the test and figure out where it is. And there it is. Looks like our project proved most useful. Now you can use this device for more than just Magnuson devices. You can plug in any entity model and entity name you need to to find what you're looking for. But beyond that, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for watching, guys, and as usual, I hope this helped.